I think I'm a member of a fairly unique club uh, that I've actually attended my own murder. Uh, I read during during doing a bit of research um, for for this that that at one stage, uh, at one stage you showed up to uh, a scene that was to be your your murder scene. Is, is that right? Uh, and normally yes. Um, and I'm, I'm also um, I used not to actually I know I put it in the book, but I used to not say a lot about it for the simple reason, uh, John. I, I was I was very conscious that um, somebody died. Uh, who, you know, well, I don't mean in my stead, but uh, certainly uh, the, the well, well, when I went down, I was out in a van driving about, and um, the police who'd been at the scene of the murder couldn't identify the person, and um, the but they'd been claimed by the IRA as a policeman, and none of the police knew him, they had no ID on them, and it was unusual, they just couldn't do it. And um, anyway, that was all fine and dandy, and so far as it is. Um, I was out and about, and I went down and looked. And I can remember putting the sheet back and says, face now, actually, what I'm talking to. And I go, no, I don't know. And uh, sort of moved on with my day, and that was, that was the way you had to do it. When you, uh, anyway, and it was a press version, of it, but I went back then to my office, and I was in there. And um, a friend of mine rang me, uh, used to play rugby with him uh, from a special branch. And uh, he said to me, CB, did you see that shooting today? And I said, did I see it? I was actually down at it. And uh, he said, did you see his car? And I said, no. And um, he wasn't in the car. I mean, so anyway, the upshot of it was the difference. Uh, and I identified too much. I can't remember what I wrote in the book. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the difference in the targeting of him, who was nothing to do with the police, he wasn't in the police. He was actually uh, going to local tech and day release from his work. Uh, but he worked, lived near where I work. And uh, the difference was in it between a three and an eight uh, in the targeting. One of the cars was three, three, and the other one was eight, eight. And the same type of car and colour. And obviously the IRA uh, people who were watching said, it's a three and eight, they've got the number wrong. Because it was too coincidental for it to be, you know, that was the only difference. And the number itself was, every other day it was correct, except that three and one eight. So they started to follow the wrong car. Jesus Christ. Did, did, did you remember exactly how you felt when the penny dropped? That, that it was oh, well, because at the time when I was there, I didn't realise it. It was only when my friend rang me. And if he hadn't, Known me in my car, I don't. I might never have heard, but anyway, um, I had to get a, a new number plate from security branch that afternoon. In the car I had to get rid of it the next day, um, and just that well, was another few changes and things being you know, security wise for my own security. But um, yeah, it was. Um, I think I'm a member of a fairly unique club uh, that I've actually attended my own murder. Yeah, that's true. Um, what I was going to say to you, okay, so would it be presumed that if a particular RUC officer was being targeted like you, uh, w w would it be would it be possible that they were just targeted because they were an RUC officer, or, or would it have to be like a, a, an officer of particular of particular um, annoyance to the to to whoever? No, I mean there may be occasions when some person has. You know, had to maybe leading an investigation into something and they've had particular success against a particular group from whatever quarter. And they might have taken thick, as we would say at home, uh, against him personally. But for the most part, um, and it would tend to be, you know, the provos or something that were killing a policeman. It was just a, you were just a policeman. It didn't really matter. Uh, you know, if um, it would, I'm not saying it never happened, but it wouldn't have always been you, know, you, the that particular person. Uh, it would have, um, they just were a cop and you were handy and they could, uh, were an easier target than some other guys, or you could make yourself a more difficult target by taking measures. Not everybody did, and not everybody stuck to them, and it uh, paid the price again. But uh, that's just, um, how it worked. Someone's going to tell you there, a bit of my head. anyway. Um, what what would be what would be some of the methods? Um, the I, I don't know if you call them like counter surveillance or preventing yourself from getting followed. But you, can you remember any just just of interest? 
Well, you would certainly have a quite a high vigilance as in a level of people. Uh, if you saw cars or people, um, you know, too often, you know, beyond the coincidence of seeing them, you, you would have heightened awareness. Um, or motorbikes would have been a danger coming up um, behind you, you know, and there's a pillion passenger. You know, you'd be certainly keeping a close eye, let's say. Um, and, and the closer you got, I mean, you can vary your route all you want, but sooner or later you have to get to where it is you work. So, I mean, obviously the route's narrow um, the closer you get to it. And, and that's, you, you could almost work out where the areas are to uh, where you're most exposed. Um, to the attack and then you would take whatever measures but checking under your car certainly um, you know for booby trap bombs uh, would be a, a, a must and very often if they're watching which they will have been uh, and they see you do that he always checks his car and we'll go on to find somebody else who's maybe more lackadaisical about it or doesn't bother all the time um, and that's just again the, the, the reality of, of these things and, and many of the person has fallen for. I love it for that reason. Right, right. You, you've always got to try it. I mean, and you'll never do I it. Mean, there's no such thing as absolute security, but you can make it look, even if it's not, you make it look as difficult as possible uh, for the terrorist, uh, or there's a chance that he might get caught, or that you might, you're vigilant, or you're always armed or carried. And I remember one guy down the country always went out in his car in the mornings uh, when he was heading to work carrying a shotgun. And they would think, oh, I'm not going near him. Um, you know, especially a shotgun, because it's hard to miss him. So, but it, it's amazing how that works. You know, that, that um, and there had been the cases when they had been looking at him and they were put off by his vigilance. So, I mean, it, it can be done. And because I remember actually with the um, rioting there a while ago uh, in the States, and I remember reading about some. A police officer I think were in New Jersey, but getting attacked at home. And I was just thinking to myself, no, it's one thing getting shot at, at work when you're just the uniform walking about. But if they went to their house because of them, that's up 10 gears. And that's where I was actually thinking to myself, I mean, for America, uh, that is the most dangerous thing I've, out of all of this street disorder and deaths and all that have been happening. That's the one thing that's the most dangerous, that I've, I've, in my opinion, that I've wanted heard or set off the biggest alarm bell with me. Because once that starts happening, or if you find that police in particular areas would decide not to go to work because it was too dangerous if they were leaving their families and houses exposed at home, you know, when they don't go. Um, I mean, uh, that's a proper problem or right, um, are going to become one. I agree. No, I, I agree. W w was there ever occasions where, um, I suppose, I mean, the like the Belfast area is, is relatively small, you know, c compared to other places. Yeah. Did you ever, uh, did you ever, when, when you were off the job, did you ever run into um, someone you had arrested or questioned or, or dealt with um, while in a professional capacity, but but you run into them on the street I, I, when you're off duty. Yeah, it, it, it it's happened now and again, and um, it, it, <laughs> you get this uh, bizarre area uh, whereby say I'm going to say pub just for the pick somewhere that you know you could be in having a pint with uh, friends or whatever, and somebody comes in, and you can see you recognize them. Uh, and most cops would be fairly observant anyway. And, and would predict, I mean, I, my kids used to keep me going. Uh, but I had to sit, you know, as I called the gunslinger seat, you know, in a restaurant. I wanted to sit facing the door. Uh, all that sort of carry on. And they would actually used to try to run ahead. You know, it was the funniest thing on earth. We'll get to the seat facing the door because Dad will want it. And they'd, <laughs> they'd do annoy him and he'd throw us out of it, which he did. <laughs> uh, anyway, but, I mean, they'd even noticed... Um, so you would have that, and you can actually find yourself in a place with, uh, you know, two players, as it were, and uh, you're, but you're probably both pretending that nobody knows who the other one is. Uh, yeah, everybody knows full well. I've even been in a bar. In fact, you've just reminded me, uh, like on the outskirts of Belfast, with, with someone and um, two players, and, and very evil, bad players. Um, multiple murders, and uh, I was standing the next thing, two pints came over, and I go, That's because I wasn't, I didn't even live anywhere near where I was. And I go, What's this? This two pints, and there's a gentleman over there, and over in the 
Cheers. And that was it. I was just saying, we, you know, we know Ian, we know who you are and all the rest. And sent me over two pounds. I said, I finished and left. <laughs> As they say in the best newspapers, I made my excuses and left. <laughs> But I mean, that, that, that didn't happen to me very often, but it did happen that one day. I remember that one afternoon. And it was in a very, it wasn't a place you'd have expected any not It wasn't anywhere near anywhere that anybody should know me. But I suppose everybody has to be somewhere. Right. I, I remember I remember reading in that book. Um, remember that book, Say Nothing by, by Patrick Radden Keefe? Yes, I know, I know the book you mean. I haven't read it actually, but I do know it. It's, it's quite, yeah, it, it's very good if, if anyone hasn't. But, but there was one story where... Um, uh, don't quote me on the details now, but I think it was an, I, in, an intelligence officer, and he'd been he'd been uh, uh, he'd been interrogating like a suspected or or what what was real what what, what was a real Republican, um, and let him go, and then went for dinner some night in a seafood place, and it was it was your man who served him his meal, um, right. yeah, that, that 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 kind of thing. Yeah, it's not just um, it doesn't uh, help for a relax. <laughs> A relaxing evening when you're trying to uh, throw the food down your neck as quickly as possible and get out because the whole danger is obviously going to be that whilst he might be there and he's out of work and yeah they make a phone call and uh, they're waiting on the outside you know as soon as you end, they'll probably know your car if they're that you feel that known or even if they don't know your car they're going to know you coming out and they'll describe what you're wearing and whoever you're with so that would be the problem 